rocket plane. Finally, we're going to go now to 240 volts DC with 2.2 kilovolt DC power. It's a rocket plane. Beautiful blue dog. Turn off the magnetism. We just see in our arc. Turn on the magnetism. She said. Turn off. The C and R. Turn on the rocket flame. Four point four kilovolt DC, two forty volts the electromagnets, low gas flow. Let's turn on the magnetism. We're going to have all DC from the power supply and the electromagnet, and argon ions will be outside. You can see the blue argon. See one more time, we'll have argon ions inside. Point two kilovolt AC, no magnetism. Turn the electromagnets to 240 volts. This is four kilovolt AC and 240 volts to these two stacked electromagnets but we got a larger central electrode.
the copper electrode in the center is larger. Just turn it on and see what happens. Still pretty good. When we turn it on, you can see these magnets clamped together. We can summarize how this device behaves using a simple theory. When argon ions on the inside with that electrical polarity, north pole on the left, south pole on the right, then the ions will spin upward in this direction and they'll curve out and eject quite strongly as thrust from the north pole and they're going the other way from the south pole with no ions there. When the south pole on the left, north pole on the right, they'll do the same from the south pole, spin the other way and eject and they won't go the other way because there are no ions there. Now when argon ions on the outside, then both axial fields will curve to the middle and cancel with a downward spin direction or curve to the middle and cancel with an upward spin direction for either the north-south or south-north polarities of this device. This would be your DC operation like this or like this with ejection all the time, 100% of the time, your AC operation would be a mixture, say, of that phase cycle and that one, or of this phase cycle or that one. So only 50% of the phases would give ejection. The others, however, might give a useful release of heat and ions. A rocket plane. Turn off the magnetism. We just see an arc. Turn on the magnetism. I have been working for some time now on a new kind of ion drive for space travel that's based on electricity, magnetism, and argon gas. And here's my latest variation of it, which uses two wire coils stacked on top of one another. When the power is turned on to these electromagnets, you'll see a North Pole magnet will stick on top of them and will also stick along the side radially on the top along the side radially. Thus we have an axial magnetic field going through the top and a radial magnetic field going all the way around the outside. As we stack the two coils on top of one another with a hole down the center, we again see an axial magnetic field sticking on the top and a radial magnetic field sticking along the outside at 90 degrees. If we turn off the power, the magnet just falls off. We're going to take a copper tube, 25 millimeter, and we're going to stick it through the center of those magnets like this. The next step is to take another copper tube, about 15 millimeters, and we're going to put it through the first copper tube like this. Next we're going to attach some electrical leads, positive red to one tube on the inside, negative black to the other tube on the outside, or vice versa. And the voltage difference between those two tubes or wires will be 2,000 to 4,000 volts, either DC or AC. And the two tubes can't touch one another, otherwise they would short circuit. Finally, this device will not work in ordinary air, so we have to get some argon gas. I've got a cylinder of it here. And put it through a little tube and run it around the two tubes so argon gas will flow between one tube and the other tube. Finally, when the argon gas is flowing and the electricity is turned on, the argon gas will be ionized so as to make a bright blue arc plus minus between these two tubes. 
you won't spin or do anything. It will just sit there fairly motionlessly. You can make power of AC or DC quite easily at 2,000, 4,000, or 6,000 volts from these microwave oven transformers. AC power directly or DC power if we include a full wave rectifier. Now once we have an arc of ionized argon gas, the really interesting effects happen when we turn on DC or AC power to these two wire coil electromagnets. I'm going to do it now and when I turn on the power you'll see the coils move relative to one another. That happens because they have the same north-south magnetic field, so they attract. See that these two wire coils have generated a north-south axial magnetic field right through the center where I put the two copper tubes, and if I turn off the power, the magnet drops away. On one side of this device, the radio magnetic field is north out red, south in blue. On the other side, the radi radio magnetic field is south out blue, north in red. So on this side the fields point in, on the other side the fields all point out. We have axial fields and radio fields. Now as I show in many movies, the axial magnetic field just makes that blue arc of ionized argon spin, either this way or that way, depending on how we set the field. Now so long as that small copper tube, which lies inside the big one, is located in this half of the device, that radiomagnetic field will make the argon ions, as they spin around that way, curve around and shoot out away from the device. Curve anti-clockwise. And that gives you an ejection force, which you wouldn't have by axial field alone. Now what happens if we change the polarity of the magnetic field? Now we'll have a blue south pole on the side of the magnet. Turn off the power, the magnet will fall away. Likewise, the axial magnetic field on the top of the magnet will be south out north in and the argon ions will spin clockwise rather than anti-clockwise but when they do that they'll curve clockwise around that magnet and still eject properly so if we flip the magnetic field from north south to south north we still get the same ejection phenomena just with a reversed sense of spin now in another case what if we keep the original magnetic field as north red on the left, south blue on the right, but we change the DC electric field which goes to these copper tubes, say from plus minus to minus plus, 2000 to 4000 volts. Now the argon ions, instead of spinning counterclockwise, they'll spin clockwise, and when they go past these two axial fields, they'll both curve inward toward the center, thereby canceling the ejection thrust of this device so that nothing happens during that electric phase cycle. We can summarize how this device behaves using a simple theory. When argon ions on the inside with that electrical polarity, north pole on the left, south pole on the right, then the ions will spin upward in this direction and they'll curve out and eject quite strongly as thrust from the north pole and they're going the other way from the south pole with no ions there. When the south pole on the left, north pole on the right, they'll do the same from the south pole, spin the other way and eject and they won't go the other way because there are no ions there. Now when argon ions on the outside, then both axial fields will curve to the middle and cancel with a downward spin direction or curve to the middle and cancel with an upward spin direction for either the north-south or south-north polarities of this device. This would be your DC operation like this or like this with ejection all the time, 100% of the time, your AC operation would be a mixture, say, of that phase cycle and that one, or of this phase cycle or that one. So only 50% of the phases would give ejection. The others, however, might give a useful release of heat and ions. going to have all DC from the power supply and the electromagnet, but argon ions will be outside. You can see the blue argon. Maybe one more time, we'll have argon ions inside.
Now this is DC 4 kilovolt to the copper tubes. Air alone, we have just an arc, no argon gas, 240 volts DC to the electromagnets. Turn it on and see what happens. Pretty impressive, isn't it? Now here is air alone, 4.4 kilovolt DC. Previously we had nitrogen and oxygen on the inside polarity. Very explosive. Now we got nitrogen and oxygen on the outside. Let's see what happens. It spins, but it doesn't eject. rocket plane. Turn off the magnetism. We just see an arc. Turn on the magnetism.